Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Move ICT. Uh, today we're going to be making a, a T-Rex running game. It's like an endless runner. So let's just take a look at the preview. So you have the T-Rex that's uh, got the animated GIF on there. You can jump. So you have to jump over the obstacles. Once the obstacles has gone past, you get a score. Uh, the obstacles will speed up once the score goes over 10. So in this game we got a way to uh, program the jump so if you press and hold it down it will jump slightly higher and if you just release it jumps slightly slower as well so it gives you opportunity sort of to if the obstacles come together then you can do the short jump and then jump over so as you can see this um, obstacles have sped up now okay. and obviously if I hit an obstacle uh, the game ends Right, so just as the game ends, you can press R to restart the game. Then everything gets back to the default uh, settings and then we can play the game again. Okay, okay then uh, let's get started on this tutorial. So uh, to begin, let's start by making a new Visual Studio project. Uh, Windows Form. Just going to name this one TVX and let's run out more ICT. Click on create. Okay, so this is the default view. I'm just going to move the other project out of the way. So the images and um, the resources that we need for this game is available on the more ICT website and in the links in the description. So you can download the images from the website. Uh, these are the images that we have. So uh, that's the running GIF. Uh, that just moves the fit around for the T-Rex and that's the dead image so you can see the eyes are bigger in this uh, image and these are the two obstacles that we have okay so once you have downloaded them uh, we can start importing them into the project so to begin let's first change the title of the form Make sure you frequently save your project. Uh, we're going to change the back color of the form to white. Okay, so it's all white. Uh, we're going to need a few components. So let's go with the floor first. So you can just place your right at the bottom here. So if you want to resize the form, you can. I'm just going to leave you at uh, the default size so that way it's easier, much easier to work with. Okay, uh, change the back color of this one to black. Okay, so uh, we're going to leave this one as it is because uh, we're not going to interact with it as much. So we're going to calculate the position of the um, T Rex manually. So let's go and add one picture I'm just gonna hold control and then drag that picture box because we're gonna need three so one for each uh, so that's gonna be the T-Rex obstacle and then obstacle again so let's just go and import the picture so right click on the picture box so choose image go to import so from here I can select all of them and import it over so as you can see now it's playing the running GIF that's the obstacle obstacle and then that's the dead one so let's just choose the running one there. Um, we're going to set the size mode to auto size. So it just fits around the sprite, um, the image, no, not the sprite. Okay, so let's go choose obstacle one for this one. Do the same again. Okay, choose obstacle two. So we're going to be setting them. So you can press the down key to this is the way you can put them on. Okay. So one of the things I'm going to do, I'm going to hold shift and then I'm going to click on all of them. And then right click, I've got the form selected as well. I just scratch that. I could just do it, do it with this one. So I can just right click on that and then just bring to front. So that way, 
because these picture boxes have a background on them so if I just move one to front again and if I move it down so see it looks like that so the idea behind it is if this one is in the front then once they are moving it's not going to show like a little choppy um, white bits on the background so it looks okay all right so if I hold shift again and select just these two and then name them here with a tag called obstacle okay and click on this one change the name of this one to t-rex okay, I need a label and a timer so let's do the label first so this one's going to be txt score change the name to txt score uh, if you come to the font option I want to change the font to consolas um, bold 16 that's good right um change the text here to score colon zero okay so we got that set now we need a timer okay change the name of the timer to the game timer interval to 20. Um, we can go to the events window, type in main game timer event. Okay. And then we come back here and in the same event window for the form. So if you click on the form and go to the events window from inside the properties window, find the key down event and just type in key is down. second one is key is up okay so this game is only going to have one key that we want to interact with so it was uh, when you press the space button it will jump up and then that's about it so there's no other keys that we need to be worrying about okay so with that being done so let's go and add a, a game reset function I to talk to you guys about the camel casing of the function names. So when we are writing a um, variable, we can write it with the lowercase first and then uppercase in the middle. So it becomes more identifiable. But if you're writing a function, it's always a good idea to camel case it. So it's uppercase for each word that's in it, right? So for example, game reset. So we got game with capital and then reset with capital as well. Uh, this is because sometimes uh, Visual Studio will show you a warning because if it's not camel case properly, it's basically like a rule that we follow. Most of the time it doesn't uh, throw up any errors, but sometimes it can because when you have got lots and lots of different functions, it can throw up a bit of a fuss. So usually it's a good practice to have as a uh, programmer. All right, so let's go and add our variables for this game. So right at the top, we're going to define a few global variables for this game. So let's go with the first one. So say bool jumping goes false. Okay. So this is what I meant by the camel casing. So as you can see, the jump has a lowercase j and the speed has a capital S. Okay. So int let's go with force. Okay, so this line here is creating a new instance of a random class. We're going to use this to generate a random number between a minimum and a maximum number. And we have the int the position. So these are the variables that we need for this game. Okay, um, this function here is a default function that comes with the Windows form. So the initialize component usually means that we are initializing all of the components that are available to the Windows form. Okay, this is what's called a constructor because it's part of that same class. So as you can see, the name of there, 
and name here so this is a constructor that's being called whenever this part loads so uh, what we can do is we can link the game reset function inside of this so whenever the game loads it get loads the game reset function as well right, so let's start with the game reset function so we can set up all the default values for everything that needs to be done so we can go on add force to 12 jump speed we'll set it to zero in this case actually we can just leave that one blank for now we don't need to set it there False score the zero obstacle speed will be ten. So to show the default score on the label. Change the T-Rex image to the running image. So this is when the game starts. This game over is going to be equal to false. And we also need to give define a T-Rex location. So this is going to be the default location for the T-Rex. So let's just take a look at that up down 367. So the Y location is 367 at the moment. So we're going to go to 367. Okay, so with all these, we should be able to load up the game. So now we're going to need run a for each loop for both of these, right? Because there's only two of them. Uh, we don't have to run a for each loop, but if you want to add more, instead of manually typing in the names of it, it's a lot easier to run a for each loop, identify them, and then move them away from the scene so they can start coming back in once the game is running okay, so let's run, run a for each loop control x in step control so it's going to look for all the components so we're going to need to find if x is a picture box so if X is a type of picture box and he has a tag of obstacle, right? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add a position to this uh, this dot client size dot width. So we'll find the width of the form first plus. So let's find between 500 and 800 pixels here. We'll try to do this number first and then if we need to uh, um, change it later on we can. So x dot width times by let's say 10. Okay. So let me just explain what's going on in this line. So in this line what we're doing is we're taking the position integer which we defined earlier we first we are saving the size width of this form so it's going to find the width of this form and then on top of the width it's going to add a random number between 500 and 800 so say it picks 600 out of that number there right so it's going to add 600 pixels more to one of the obstacles and then it's going to position it there plus uh, width times by 10 so that way it's kind of far away uh, when the game starts right so it's going to save all of this inside this position here so after that what we need to do is just say x the left is equal to position so this way it has positioned it just right there for us so if i make this number a bit smaller i can show you what it does so 10 by let's say 100 okay so if we go back here now um, we should be able to see it so if i start that now as you can see now the obstacles are not in the scene so if i make that bigger 
right so they have been positioned there right so when the game would start they would generally start moving from right there because the game is going to start um the timer is going to run 20 frames so uh, 20 milliseconds each time the timer is going to tick so they if they were this close they would come really fast that's why we move them further down so it gives the player a little bit time to poise and then to get ready for all the obstacles that's heading their way yeah. so i'm going to move that back to 500 to about 800 okay so we don't need that spaces here i'll make it a bit smaller so read it and then last thing we need to do is we're going to start the game timer okay so that would do for the game reset function we don't have to add anything else and the good thing about having this inside a method is that uh, once we want to reset the game we can just simply call this function and i'll show you how to do that in a minute okay so let's do the key is up and key is down so first thing we're going to do is key is up so if let's say key particles the space so if the space key is pressed and jumping boolean is set to false right so we only want to jump once you're not jumping so we don't want to be able to just keep jumping and gain higher so then we're going to be able to set jumping equals to true okay and that's it really that's all we need to do for the space uh, sorry the key down event so now in the key up event first one we're going to do is if jumping is set to true we will set jumping back to false okay so once the key is up right, it's going to look for the jumping variable if it's set to true then we're going to set the jumping variable back to false again now for the reset so if so if we are pressing the r button so if the r button is pressed and released right we also need to check if game over is set to true right then we should be able to run the game reset function okay so we're looking for the release of the r key and if the game over boolean is set to true run the game of uh, game reset function okay so let's do the main game timer inside this timer we're going to type in all of the instructions for this game so first let's link the jump speed to the t-rex so t-rex top plus equals jump speed Tx discord text equals so this is going to show that score into the label um, let's say jumping is equals equals true so if the jumping is true and force is less than zero so jump speed jumping yeah. so if jumping is equals equals true and force is less than zero so it's the force that's going to so that's basically the limit of how far that player can jump up All right then we're going to be setting the jumping to equals to false then here we check if jumping is true all right so then we're going to say jump speed minus 12 so it's going to be pushing the player upwards instead of pushing it downwards and then we'll say force is minus equals to one so we're going to reduce one from the force and so this way what happens is that once the force goes below <coughs> once the force goes below zero it's going to be moving the player downwards again Okay, so let's go to else here and say jump speed equals to 12. So if jumping isn't true, so once the force goes below zero, it's going to change it back to false, and that way the player can start coming down towards the platform. So right now, once the player has jumped, 
and came down we need to figure out if the player is going below a certain point and then reset the player back to this position here okay so in this case we're going to say if t of top is greater than all right so let's take a look at the position that we're getting okay so if it's greater than 366 let's say and obviously jumping is false okay so that means that this has this condition has run at this point okay and then we can change the force it goes back to 12 so we have got that threshold to jump again then we set the t-rex dot top to 367 and then jump speed is going to be zero so there's no need to push the player down at this point anymore so if i just run this let's see how it works so at the moment i press the space key so once it hits once the force goes below a certain point then it's going to start coming down again okay obviously the obstacles are not anywhere near so right now they've been spawned over there That works nicely all right then so for the part where we need to move the obstacles now so we need to run a for each loop again so this time we're running it inside the timer so we go to control x So if X is picture box and it has a string, uh, sorry, it has a tag, a type of string uh, called obstacle, then we're going to be moving X with the speed of the obstacle, right? So obstacle speed. So it's going to be moving that way. So once it has left the scene from this end, we need to respawn it right here. So if So less than minus 100, right? So if it's gone below a 100 on this side, then we can say x dot left equals client size the width plus, in this case, we're going to do 200 to 500. So it's going to generate a number between 200 and 500 plus Width times let's say 15. <coughs> so we can move it slightly. So it's a similar thing that we did with the reset, but we're just changing some of the variables around so it's a bit more um, dynamic. Okay, and also once the so if the x has left from this side, it means that you have successfully um, jumped over it at the moment. Okay, so if we run this now, we should be able to see them coming towards the player so there they come so right now obviously we don't have a hit the scores are going up okay we we'll get four and then so on and so forth all right so that works fine so now last thing we need to do is we need to figure out the bounds so we need to have a way to collide the obstacle with the player so let's take a look at the t-rex dot bounds dot intersect with okay x dot bounds because it's running inside a loop we can simply call the x so if you had to do this separately you'd have to call obstacle one and obstacle two so a benefit of doing it inside a loop is that we don't have to manually go and, and check the names of these and call it because we already tagged them so as long as they're all tagged we can al always call them inside the loop Okay, so once they intersect with each other, first thing we need to do is we need to stop the timer. So, okay, so that way the the game has ended. So let's show the T-Rex dead image. So this is dot dead. Okay, change the score. Okay. 
Actually, instead of doing that, I can just do it this way. So plus equals is going to find what's existed text on the label, and then it's just going to add next to it. So let's just say press R2. Semicolon. And then lastly, we're going to change the game over to true. Okay. So once we hit an obstacle, it's going to stop the game timer, change the image of the T Rex, show that press R to reset, and then change the game over Boolean to true. Now remember, this, this part is important, it doesn't look important, but it is because if we didn't have that then um, you can easily restart restart the game while the game is still running so because we set it to true here so unless this boolean is set to true it won't be able to run the restart function so this part here won't work so once it's only once this is true we're able to sort of restart the game so let's take a look so right now I can jump so I hit that. So right now it says score zero, I press R to restart. So if I press R, everything goes back. Okay. Okay, for the last part, we need to do a speed increase once the score has hit 10. Okay, um, if you notice that we are controlling both of the obstacles with the obstacle speed integer right here. So what we can do here is right under that for each. So instead of doing it inside the loop, so this part here is just controlling the movement, the respawning and collision with the player. So instead of here, we're going to say if score is, let's say, greater than 10 right so obstacle speed we can change it to like let's say 15 okay. I think for now let's do it to like greater than five so if we hit five um, if we get a score of five then it So now we should speed up. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. So that's the game tutorial, uh, fully really. It's uh, quite straightforward. So we have we have our global variables right here. These are accessible from any function. We created a custom game reset function inside the game timer. We put all of our logic inside of it. Uh, you got the key up sorry key down key up and the game reset function okay um i hope you guys had fun with this one um and i will see you on the next one